Shalom, my Israelite brothers and sisters. So first of all, all praises to our Elohim, the Alpha and Omega, no beginning or end, and to his Holy Son, Hamashiach. So as you know, brothers and sisters, I've been doing a four-part lesson on the blasphemous ABC camps in their European chart. Now, I'm going to have to put that on hold just for a little bit because many of you have been asking a dire question that you've been wanting to know for a while now. And I've been getting quite a few emails and requests to deal with this particular subject. Now, normally I don't like to break any lessons, especially if I'm doing uh, different parts to a lesson. So I had to really pray about this. And the Most High gave me my answer this morning. Well, actually last week when I saw another comment referring to this particular subject that needs to really be dealt with. And it is a very important one. And you're going to see why it's extremely important that we deal with this. So the lesson that we're going to be doing today, I titled it, The Dangers of De-Elevating, and I said D with a big D, De-Elevating the Holy Ruach, Hokadesh, to an earthly status. Now this lesson is very important in very many ways. And we're going to explain that throughout the lesson. Now I'm addressing all of you who've been asking me this question and the question is this that you've been asking me is the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? Now let me repeat that again so everybody hears me clearly. So the question that has been asked of me in my emails and as well as the comments is the Holy Ruach, Hokadesh, is he the earthly mother? Now that's the question. Whether you want to say the Holy Spirit is the earthly mother, that's the question I've been getting uh, quite a few on you guys that's been, that's been asking that. And another question that some of you have been asking me to go along with that is, is the Holy Spirit a she? And that's the question that goes along with the first question you asked me about. Is the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? Now, what I'm getting ready to show you is getting ready to be is, is going to be so profound that after this lesson, if you continue to classify the Holy Spirit, whether you want to call him the Holy Ruach Hokadesh. Holy Spirit, if you continue to classify the Holy Ruach as the earthly mother, you're going to be in for one hell of a shock. Because after we go through some things and show you through scriptures, you're going to realize how dangerous this doctrine is. Now, I'm not going to even consider it a, consider it a doctrine. Because it's a blasphemous thing to declassify or to de-elevate the Holy Spirit in such a state. Now that I said that, now I am required to prove to you through scriptures to back everything I just said. And we're going to prove it to you. Then I'm going to take you way back because this whole thing with the Holy Spirit being a she or the earthly mother goes all the way back to Nimrod. And we're going to talk more about that because I want to save that to investigate some other things. So Zion, I'm going to need you to pay close attention to this lesson. If you think that you're going to be distracted in any way, Please stop the lesson and listen to it at another time because you're going to really need to hear this. And we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures. Now, when I say a lot of scriptures, I mean a lot of scriptures because we got to we got to investigate 
everything. You know, so, and when it comes to the word of the most high, there are no in-betweens. And see, and that's the problem with this whole motherly earth, this earthly mother concept. It's a man-made concept. You would not find earthly mother or mother nature in the scriptures. Now, like I said before, I'm going to tell you and show you where all this stuff came from and why some Hebrews are trying to interject with assumptions this theory that they've been uh, calling the Holy Spirit the earthly mother. And you're going to see where, where they got that stuff from. And you're going to be in for one awakening. So Zion, make sure you got a pen and some paper because this may be an all day Shabbat study for you. You know, this is going to be good for you all to even study even further. So before we go anywhere, uh, the scriptures that I want to take you to, I want to first take you to Genesis. Now, there's a reason why we're going to go to Genesis. I'm going to show you something. So just bear with me because I have to explain everything. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and let's look at verse 9. And it says, And out of the ground made Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree... Now, I have this underlined for a reason. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, some of you are probably wondering, okay, where is he going with this? Hang tight, Zion. You're going to see here in a minute. All right, saints, we're in the same chapter. Well, we're going to jump down to verse 16 and 17. And it says, And Elohim commanded man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And I'm going to read that last part again. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, here's the question, saints. Now, did Adam and Eve die right away when they took apart, when they took part of that knowledge of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? No, they didn't die right away. But they did eventually die because they disobeyed the command of the Most High Yah. Now, let me remind you, Zion, if we go back up to verse 16, and the latter part of that, it says, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. See, the Most High gave them all the knowledge that they needed, they can eat from. The Most High said, Only the tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat from it. In other words, you fast forward today, the, the, the Most High has given us his word, his word, his scriptures. See, the problem with a lot of Hebrews, they go outside the scriptures and they start dabbling in that unforbidden fruit. And they start gaining this knowledge of good and evil they don't need to be attaining. And then it takes them to a whole nother level. Next thing you know, spirits are on them, evil spirits. And they're going into a whole different direction. So that knowledge of good and evil that Adam and Eve took part of got them kicked out of the garden. And not only kicked out of the garden, but many other curses came with it. The ground was cursed. They were cursed. Eve was cursed. The childbearing was cursed. Everything around them became cursed because of their disobedience to the Most High Yah. Whatever knowledge they took part of, they were not supposed to take part of that knowledge. 
Now, you may be wondering, okay, what does this have to do with the lesson? What does this have to do with classifying the Holy Spirit as the earthly mother? Explain that to me. Well, let me tell you something, saints. Even today, a lot of our people are still taking part of that unforbidding fruit that the Most High told Adam and Eve not to take part of. That tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, this whole man-made concept of the Holy Spirit being a she and the, and the earthly mother is this unforbidden fruit that we don't need to be taken part of. Now, did this knowledge get Adam and Eve kicked out of the garden? Absolutely, it sure did. Now, you may be thinking something like, this is kind of innocent. I don't see how the Most High can keep me from the tree of life just because I classified the Holy Spirit as the earthly mother. Okay, I want you to hold that thought. All right, hold on to that thought because I'm going to show you from scriptures how blasphemous that is. But before we go there, let's go to another verse. So I want to show you something else. All right, so let's, uh, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Proverbs. Proverbs 16, 25. And at the bottom, I have a precept. It's just saying the same thing in Proverbs 14, 12. But Proverbs 16, 25. It says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, these man-made doctrines may sound good to some of you. They may sound stylish. You know, I like that. That has a, uh, that, that, that has a twist to it. You know, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And people who classify the Holy Spirit as a she and the earthly mother are taking part in something that they should not even be dealing with. And if you're doing that, you need to stop it. I mean, immediately you need to get on your knees to the most high, face the east and repent. Because I guaranteed you saints, after I show you in the scriptures, you're going to think twice about even trying to even think about classifying the Holy Spirit as the earthly mother. I guarantee it. I guarantee. And if you don't, then that means you you just don't want to obey the scriptures. You want to do your own thing and follow your own man-made ways. But hey, that's up to you. You know, that is up to you. And you're going to have to deal with the most high on that one. Now, I told you earlier that I'm going to give you a, just a brief history on where this man-made concept this earthly mother thing now some of you might have heard of Kemet you know Kemet was after Nimrod and Kemet was actually responsible for inventing a lot of the pagan holidays that we see today in this in this very day but what we're going to do is we're not going to get into this yet because we want to go through and investigate all the verses that's dealing with earthly. Now I said earthly because what I want to show you is you're not going to find nowhere in scriptures where earthly is a is a is a, associated with motherly or the earthly mother in any kind of way. Well, actually, you're going to be surprised what earthly is really associated with, and that's what I'm saying. You're going to think twice before you classify the Holy Ruach Hokadesh as the earthly mother because to do that is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit because you're putting a title you're putting a man-made title on the Holy Spirit in reality you're worshiping a deity a man-made deity that created the thing in the first place but I'm gonna explain that more in detail though so first, let's go ahead and investigate all the verses in the Bible that are dealing with earthly. And then after we get done with earthly, we're going to look up the word earth, okay? And I'm going to let you see with your own eyes. You tell me if you see any verses that's dealing with earth, if it's associated 
with being called a mother or dealing with the earthly mother. We're going to look at all that. I told you guys we're going to be uh, we're going to be here for a minute and we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures. And then we're going to be looking up all the verses dealing with the Holy Spirit. So we're going to cover all grounds, Saint. We're going to cover all of it. And by the end of this lesson, you're going to see and you're going to know without a shadow of a doubt that this whole concept of the Holy Spirit being a she and being called the earthly mother is straight from the pits of Satan himself. All right, Zion, so let's go ahead and address the question that you've been asking me. Is the earthly mother the Holy Spirit? So what we're going to do is we're going to look up all the verses dealing with earthly and we're going to let you decide we're going to read through them and we're going to see if it's associated with earthly mother now in the strongs it mentions it about five times and you know if you have a strongs you don't you know you can go online and you can get the free strongs and you can look up the words as well too so let's go to the blue letter bible and I use this quite a bit, so for just clarification for the screen and everything, I'm going to use this so it'll be easier for you all to see. So John 3.12, it says, if I, have, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So that's that verse right there, dealing with earthly. And we're going to read uh, the next verse, John 3.31. It says, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. And we're going to look at the word earthly and get, get the meaning of it. And speak it of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above. So again, it's associating, associating earth with the earthly. Earthly. All right. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of Elohim and a house and not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And then um, Philippians 3.19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory in their, is the, in their shame who and mind earthly things. Now look at this one, because this is a huge one. It says, uh, James 3.15, This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. And I wanted to show you that for a reason, because in each of these verses, it's referring to earthly as carnal, you know, and the earth. So what I did now is we're going to look up some strongs. We're going to look up some words the meaning of earthly and where it's uh derived from and everything because like i said the question was that you can ask me is the holy spirit the mother the earthly mother so here's just i don't know if you all can see this hopefully you all can see this you got to make your screen bigger so i looked up the word earthly and existing upon the earth earthly Terrest terrestrial, meaning living plane, and it's from the word, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, apegius, apegius, and there's some more meaning, upon existing upon the earth, earthly, terrestrial, house we live on, spoken of the body. So you can see, as we read, that it has nothing to do with or associated with being called earthly mother. And you all can just go back through that and look, and then we'll look again here. Let's look at another one. It's pretty much the same thing. Apegius. Existing upon the earth, earthly, terrestrial. And then right here in the middle, worldly, physical, or morally, earthly, in the earth. So it's pretty much this is what you have when you're dealing with uh, earthly so everything that we read so far dealing with earthly has no association whatsoever of being uh, related to earthly mother now I told you uh, towards when we, when we get done going through the scriptures 
I'm going to show you where this whole earthly mother concept came from, and it goes all the way back to Nimrod, and really with the uh, greatness of Kemet when he was around during that time, he had a lot of, of influence with a lot with a lot of these these uh, inventions of these pagan rituals and everything, and a lot of them dealt with uh, the goddess Mother Earth, the the goddess fertility goddess, and we're gonna talk more about that a little later on, and you're gonna understand completely where this whole mother motherly earth this whole feminine spirit came from so zion when you hear anyone or if you use the term earthly mother to associate with the holy spirit all you're doing is that you're calling the holy spirit carnal earthly now we just looked at the word you can go back through the scriptures and look it up but we're not even halfway done because we still got a lot of more searching to do. And then we're going to show you where this whole earthly mother came from. And I think a lot of you are going to be in for a big shock. You're going to be really surprised. And some of you are not going to want to believe it, Bo. But you know what? I always challenge you to do your own research so you can look that stuff up yourself. So let's continue. All right, saints, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we're going to look up the word earth and we're going to see if it has any association with earthly mother in any form or fashion. Now, I looked up a lot of these and not one verse associates it with earthly mother and it took me some time to go through all these scriptures brothers and sisters I'm telling you because I wanted to find out maybe there is something that I'm missing you know so you know I'm gonna test it and search and dig for it but not one verse of earth is associated with it and it's over 2,000 scriptures dealing with earth y'all hear me saints over 2,000 now I'm gonna show you it in the Strong's Concordance and I'm going to show you, we're going to go to the Blue Letter Bible. Now, the only thing I don't like about the Blue Letter Bible, it's a great resource, but the only thing is it doesn't have the Apocrypha, you know, but that's okay, you know, because I can still use it to study. It's still a good resource to use and what have you. So we're going to go to the Strong's Concordance, and I'm just going to show you. Now, it's going to kind of run through it pretty quick, and you guys are going to be like, wait a minute, I can't see it. You're going too fast. But don't worry, we're going to go to the Blue Letter Bible. So here's Earth. Now, I want you to look at all the scriptures that are dealing with earth. I'm just showing you this because to show you how many verses are dealing with just the word earth. I'm telling you, saying there's over 2,000 of them. And not one of them, not one of them is associated with earthly mother in any form or fashion. Now, I told you we're going to examine a lot of scriptures. We're going to have to go through and test everything because, like I said, I'm going to show you where this earthly mother concept is coming from. And you're going to be in for a big treat because you're going to realize, you're going to be like, oh, man, I can't be, I can't be saying that no more. I can't be calling the Holy Spirit earthly mother anymore. You're going to drop your head in shame once I show you. Now, let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. Let's examine some of them. Because, I mean, brothers and sisters, we'll be here all day just examining this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down all the way down. I'm just going to show you all the hits uh, that I got when you put in when you put in Earth. So look at all these books right here. I mean, it's it is a bunch of them, but we're going to look at a few verses, though. Like I said, we're not going to be able to look at all of them, but I challenge you on your day, maybe on the Shabbat with your family, with your kids. Just go through the scriptures and just start studying, you know, examine everything. So let's look at a few scriptures here. Of course, Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, Elohim created the earth, created the heaven and the earth. Now, we all know uh, about the creation and everything. You know, and this is, this is really fun, brothers and sisters. When you take the word of the Most High and you just go through it and you study, especially when you're dealing with a subject you're not too sure about, like the question you asked me is the, earthly mother, is the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? See, this is a good time for you to open your Bible. Get out whatever resources, your coordinates, go online and really look. 
So you, you guys, you can just see the scriptures here. You can read through some of them because some of them I paused so that way you can uh, read through some of them. So it's just, it's a good thing that you test the spirits. This don't take people's word for it. All right, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to go check out another book here and we'll see what it says about earth. And like I said, you can pause this and you can just get the scriptures. Let's look at, let's go to, um, here, scroll through here. Let's go to Psalms. Let's check out Psalms. See what it says in uh, Psalms. And here's a bunch of them here in Psalms. Psalms 47, 7. For Elohim is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. So this is what I'm talking about. You guys need to open up your resources. Open up your scriptures, coordinates. And start looking up every verse because, like I said, the question you asked me is the spirit, is the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? This is where you come in at. This is where you get your Bible, you get your open coordinates, and you look for everything. And if you cannot bag that up with scriptures, then you don't need to be saying the earthly mother is the Holy Spirit. Because you may be doing something that you're totally ignorant of. And you could be worshiping. You are worshiping, actually. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to prove to you that when you call the earthly mother the Holy Spirit, you actually are worshiping the Egyptians goddess, fertility, fertility goddess, the real mother earth of the Egyptology. But don't worry, we're going to get there. And I'm going to show you. And you can be like, dog, I didn't know that came from all that. Yep, I'm going to show you where the term mother nature came from. That's where it all came from. It came from the fertility goddess so let's look at some more here revelation revelation all right revelation 7 1 and after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree so you see you you go through all these verses you're not going to see any association whatsoever with uh, the earth being called motherly. Now, there are a few verses that associate the earth as her, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the spirit being the earthly mother. I mean, we can go on and on and on. This is fun for me. You know, I love this stuff, you know, and I, this is what I live for, brothers and sisters, to be able to present to you, to serve you in this manner so that you can be encouraged to study the scriptures. And here's some more verses of Revelation. I'll pause that right here. You can you can you can look at that. And I'm just scrolling up kind of fast and everything, but I'm just showing you the different verses, all the verses dealing with earth, and you're not going to see not one. Trust me, I've already viewed all of them. Went through all of them, and I told you it took me some time to uh do that. Because uh every every downtime I get, you know, I like to just study and prepare everything for you guys and make sure I get it first. All right, so let's go to Matthew. Here's some more. And Matthew, verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So everything that's dealing with earth is used um, in this earthly manner. You know, the earth which is, of course, carnal. And we read a uh, verse net when, we, when we're dealing with earthly. So there are no verses that are associated with motherly. None whatsoever. Now, you're probably asking a question. Okay, well, if people are calling the Holy Spirit the earthly mother, then why are they, then where are they getting this from? Where is this stuff coming from that they're calling the Holy Ruach Hokadesh, the earthly mother. Now, I know you probably getting tired of me repeating that, but there's a reason why I keep repeating that, because I want to get it through your heads. The Most High wants you to get it through your heads how vital this is to call upon something, to title something that you have no idea of what you're doing. And, you know, and... And some, some Hebrews are probably doing it out of ignorance because they don't know no better because it sounds good. Now, let me tell you one of the theories that where some Hebrews get this from. So you got the Father, right? You got Elohim. You got the Son. You got Hamashiach. Oh, wait a minute. 
the Holy Spirit must be a female. See, that's their conclusion, but with no scriptures to back it up. All it is is a bunch of assumptions and injections. Oh, I'm going to go by what I think. I think it's this. I think it's that. No, you cannot do that. And I told you earlier, when it comes to the scriptures, there are no in-betweens. You hear me? There are no in-betweens. It's either a truth or it's a lie. Now, here's the big part we're getting ready to go to. Now, now I'm getting ready to show you where this whole concept came from. Now, many of you don't know because I, ne I never share this, but a long time ago, I used to be into Egyptology. I used to study this stuff. And you know how it was. You know, when you're searching your identity and everything, we all at one point thought we came. We were Africans. You know, we thought we was this because... You know, the heathens lied to us and said that we came over here on slave ships from Africa and we were Africans and just like them and everything and didn't know our true identity. So I was searching for Egypt. You know, I was studying Egyptology and all that stuff. And what I found blew my mind and what made me come out of that was the, same, was the very same thing I'm about to show you right now. Because once I started learning all these pagan gods and deities... And it had nothing to do with Elohim. I turned away from that stuff so fast. I mean, it wasn't even funny. You know, I was running faster than Carl Lewis from that stuff. All right, Zion. So what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm going to show you some of the earthly mother goddess, the Egyptian goddess that stem all the way back to Nimrod and Kemet. And I'm going to show you some things that's going to blow your mind. Now, let me, fair, let me, let me uh, warn you. Now, whenever you're studying outside the Bible, and I know a lot of you, including myself, you like to study things for edification so that you don't fall into the trap. So all I'm going to tell you and all I'm saying is when you do study those kind of things, please make sure that you are praying, you asking for guidance of the Holy Spirit to learn for edification purposes. Because, you know, too many of our people, they start getting off into stuff. And next thing you know, it's taking them away from Elohim. And anything that you do that takes you away from the Most High, you need to leave it alone, brothers and sisters. You need to leave it alone. And the only reason why I'm showing you this, and I'm going to be showing you the, uh, the different earthly mothers, the goddesses of Egypt, is because the question was asked to me, is the Holy Ruach Hokadesh the earthly mother? And you want to answer, and you all deserve an answer. You all need to know where this stuff is coming from because you can't find it in scriptures. So where else are people are getting it from? Now, I'm not saying that every Hebrew that are saying that the earthly mothers, the Holy Spirit, truly knows what's going on because some of them don't. They're truly ignorant because they're going off of assumptions and injections. So because it sounds good in their minds, they think they're doing the right thing, but they have no idea the dangers of that. When you put a title like that on the Holy Spirit, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, I, I don't know how many times I can stress this to you. When you classify the Holy Spirit as the earthly mother, you are giving homage to these Egyptian goddess, these mother earths, the earthly mother of Egypt. That's right, brothers and sisters. That's what you're doing. Now, you can say, oh, I don't think that. Oh, you can believe that all you want to. And when people do that, you have no idea. You're putting a spell out on people. And when people hear that, and if you're a teacher, you're teaching that. I don't know who's all teaching that stuff. But if you're a teacher that's teaching that, that the earthly mother is the Holy Spirit, you are putting an evil spell on your listeners. And that's very dangerous. Words have meaning and power brothers and sisters be careful of what you worship and give homage to that's right be very careful who you worship and give homage to when you call the holy ruach hakadesh the earthly mother then you're not speaking to the spirit brothers and sisters you're not you're speaking to an evil deity and you're giving homage to the pagan gods that's what got our forefathers in slavery in the first place. This is the reason why we're in this situation that we're in now. 
because ignorant Hebrews want to continue to worship idols. And some of them don't even care. It's like, well, it sounds good. I'm going to say it anyway. I don't care. I'm going to call the Holy Spirit the earthly mother because it sounds good. Well, I can't prove it from scriptures, but I, I got theories. Oh, wait a minute. See, you have, you, have, you have the Father and you have the Son. And yeah, that's it. The Holy Spirit is the mother. I got it now. You ain't got nothing. I got, I, I, you know, I, I got some understanding about it where, 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 why we can call them that. And see, this is what they say too. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I had a dream. I had a vision. The Most High told me that the Holy Spirit was a she and that the Holy Spirit is the Mother Earth. That's right. I had a dream, so I know it's true. Mm -mm. You need to stop it. You need to get on your knees and repent immediately if you're doing that because once you know then you know you're going to be responsible and you can't say that you didn't know from here on out all right so let me show you some of these earthly mothers that some of you hebrews love to worship since you want to classify the holy ruach hokadesh as the earthly mother now y'all remember the name isis yeah, Isis was an ancient god that still exists today, mostly created by Nimrod and Kemet, an earthly mother, or as you want to call it, a mother earth. She was the daughter of the god, of the earth god, Geb. Now, I'm not making this stuff up, brothers and sisters. You all can go look this stuff up for yourself because you want to know where they're getting this earthly mother from. This stuff goes way back, and this is nothing new. You know, Song of Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. I remember when I was in Christianity, I remember some people teaching this stuff, that the Holy Spirit is a she, and calling the Holy Spirit the earthly mother. I've heard it before, so this is nothing new. It ain't like it's a new concept that just came up. Saying this has been going on for thousands and thousands of years all the way back to Kemet and Nimrod. So this is Isis. And there are a lot of them. All these so-called earthly mother goddesses. There's a bunch of them, saying There's a bunch of them. And all of it stems back to one place. And that's some paganism. All right, let's look at another earthly mother goddess. Now, y'all remember the earthly mother goddess called Durga, right? Durga. The Hindu mother goddess. Now, all these mother goddess were supposedly responsible for fertilizing the earth, bringing the rain and the due season and all that stuff, the crops. See, this is what the heathens worship. That's why the Most High tells us in Jeremiah 10 2, learn not the way of the heathens. But for some of you that want to call the, uh, the Holy Spirit the earthly mother, I don't think you got that memo yet. So hopefully and prayerfully you get it after this lesson because I'm showing all of you this and this stuff should be making your head twitch right now. This should be giving you chills up your spine because this is where all this stuff is coming from. And I pray to the Most High, every one of you listening to this lesson, get chills up your spine because it should be you, you should be at the point where you hate wickedness so much. That even at the sight of wickedness, you turn away. And this is why the Most High has had me showing you this stuff. So you don't have to be ignorant, saints. Let us come out of our ignorance. Stop making up crap that we want to just put in the Word because it sounds good. All right, let's look at another earthly mother goddess. This one is called Nugwa. That's right. The Chinese earthly mother goddess. I'm telling you, every heathen nation on the earth got their own earthly mother goddess. And you dare put that title on the holy Ruach. Shame on you. Because of your ignorance, your ne negligence to do diligent, diligent research. But I guess some of y'all don't like to study. I guess some of y'all just, just take anybody's word, call the Holy Spirit anything. 
man, I mean, that's just how stupid some of our people are. I mean, it's just, I, I get mind boggled sometimes, just the way our people act and think sometimes. Man, how stupid can some he, some of these Hebrews actually be? Man, the, the bleed that stuff. And you see, I I know because I I've, I've dealt with a lot of things, brothers and sisters. I studied a lot of a lot of stuff. I dabbled in a lot of things, so I know a lot of stuff. I'm not trying to brag about it, but I just know where all this crap, all this devilish stuff comes from. So this is the Chinese earthly mother goddess. All right, so let's look at another earthly mother goddess. This one is called Gaia, the Greek earthly mother goddess, or as some people want to say, the mother earth. And let me tell you something about these goddesses. They all have one thing in common. They all deal with fertility. They were fertility goddess. They were responsible, supposedly, by the heathens, the ancient he the heathens, to bring about good crops and all that kind of stuff bring goodwill to people, you know, all kind of devilish, crazy stuff. But this is Gaia, the Greek mythology. Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, all this stuff stems all the way back, like I keep saying, to Kemet and Nimrod. This is where the heathens get it from. And so, you know, and notice that all these goddesses are female, are female feminine. And now you can have an idea of why people would try to call the Holy Spirit a she. I'm telling you, this stuff has crept into Christianity and Christianity has spread. And many of you still got Christianity in you, but you're bringing it over to the Hebrew faith. And now you want to call the Holy Spirit a she. You want to call the Holy Spirit the earthly mother. Well, where do you think it all came from? Where do you think the term Mother Nature came from? It came from the mother goddesses, the earthly mothers of the pagan world. Use your heads. Use your heads. Damn, I tell y'all, some of y'all, the Most High gave you a brain for a reason. To be able to think, to be rational. Okay, why am I calling the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? There's something wrong with that picture. Hello. Earth the Hebrews. Is there anything in that brain of yours? Houston, I think we have a problem. Houston, we have a serious problem. Oh, you all going to love this next earthly goddess mother. The earthly mother. They call Coltacu. That's right. It is the Aztecs, Aztec, earthly mother goddess. That's right, those Mexicans that you like to call Israelites, that's their mother earth, their earthly mother goddess. She is supposed to be the destroyer and the creator of the earth. Supposedly supposed to be one of the most powerful earthly mother goddesses of all, but that's what the heathens believe. But we know, brothers and sisters, that Elohim is the true Elohim of all other gods in the whole universe. Elohim is the Alpha and Omega. Elohim is the creator of all. But yet, you got our people who want to worship these deities. And you want to title the Holy Spirit? As the earthly mother, I hope y'all see it by now. And y'all continue to call our holy Ruach Hokadesh the earthly mother. And you worse off just smoking crack. You might as well just get your pot of crack and just smoke it until you're dead. Because you're just as brain dead as anything if you don't get it by now. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not making this stuff up now. now I wouldn't be sitting here before Elohim telling you, telling you this. And just pulling this stuff out of anywhere, you know, and just making this stuff up. Go, go study for yourselves. You, you, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. But like I told you in the beginning, be very careful when you start studying this stuff. Make sure that you're being led by the Holy Spirit because you'll find yourself, if you get too deep into that stuff, you'll find yourself, you'll find yourself going one way. 
going somewhere on a whole nother level. You know, and like I said, the only reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to see where this whole earthly mother concept comes from. That's where it comes from. It all comes from pagan worship. All right, let's look at another earthly mother goddess called Ninsun. And just one of many. And like I said, there's a bunch of them. We're just covering a few. But there's a bunch of them. And it all goes back to pagan worship. That's why when you study, brothers and sisters, and you don't have nothing to back it up from the scriptures, you better be very careful what you put on the Most High. Especially the Spirit of the Most High. You gotta be very careful. Alright, and another one is Asis Yah. And this earthly mother goddess is the Aiken people of West Africa regard Asis Yah as Mother Earth, the earth goddess of fertility and the upholder of truth. You know, it was not common, brothers and sisters, for the heathens to have at least 20 different gods that they worship. Why do you think that the Most High kept us set apart from these heathens? And even this should just make you even just and wonder why would anybody want to associate the Holy Spirit of the Most High Yah with these pagan idols? But that's what you're doing if you're going to apply the earthly mother to the Holy Spirit. That's just how dangerous it is, brothers and sisters. Like I said in the beginning, be careful because many of our people are still taking part of the unforbidden fruit. They want to continue to eat from that unforbidden fruit that the Most High commanded us not to eat of. And by doing that, they want to make up their own little concepts, make up their own little theory. Maybe they want to be popular. Maybe it sounds good. They want to be the first to say it but have no idea how dangerous that thing is. So now I'm just going to show you some pictures. So just take a look at this. This is just some pictures of these earthly mother goddesses and all that stuff. So like I said, there's a lot to cover of these goddesses. There's a bunch of them, you know, and I only talked about a few of them because I don't get too deep into that stuff. I, the only reason, like I said, is I wanted to show you where this whole earthly mother concept is coming from. And people just don't have no idea what they're doing when they put titles on the Most High. And they have no idea uh, where it's coming from. You know, some of them do, some of them don't care. Some of them are purposely doing it and knowing what they're doing. So you got to be careful um, who you listen to sometimes. You got to be very careful who you get in your, you know, because you got people out there who are purposely do stuff. You know, it's, it's a crazy world we live in, brothers and sisters. You've got to be very careful. You've got to test the spirits. You've got to test everything. Now, there are other deities I didn't mention, like Frigga, uh, Best Test. Those are other earthly uh, uh, earthly mother goddesses. Y'all remember the movie Thor, right? Her, his mother name was Frigga, and she was supposed to be the, the earthly mother, the goddess. You know, they don't just do Hollywood movies to do them. They put stuff in there, and they show you what they're trying to do because these heathens, they still worship these deities you know so I just want to show you that brothers and sisters I hope that this sparked uh, some kind of awareness in your brains to make you aware now that you would think, think twice I mean literally think twice before you even title the holy Ruach Hokadesh as the earthly mother because see now you know where all this stuff is stemming from it is not supported by scriptures whatsoever and we're not even done yet we haven't even covered the holy spirit yet and we're going to still cover the verses on that so we still got a ways to go brothers and sisters and sad to say zion unfortunately a lot of these heathenistic practices have crept into the israelite awakening you know because you have some hebrews who prefer to worship idols you know and a lot of them are doing it in ignorance, well, I'm not going to say a lot of them, but, you know, you have some that are just, they have no idea of what they're doing, you know, and you got some who are blatantly are doing it, but they just don't care. Hey, I want y'all to go over to Romans with me. I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Romans chapter one 
and I'm going to read verses, especially 22 and 23, because that's what I want to focus on. Because you know the heathens, they've always worshipped their gods, always. And that's why the Most High had us set apart. We were not to follow the ways of the heathens. But you all know as well as I do, what did our forefathers do? They went after their idols, wanted to be like the most, wanted, wanted to be like these kings. Hey, we want kings. They got kings. How come we can't have kings? You know, they weren't happy with what the Most High had for them, the governing powers that the Most High had for them. They weren't happy with that. They wanted what the heathens had. So let's look at Romans, so with verse 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of uncorruptible Elohim into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. And so the reason why I read this and sharing this with you is because we have a bad habit of bringing the Most High down to our level. And, you know, the heathens have done this for thousands of years. And we should not be repeating the same mistakes as our forefathers did. And so when we start putting titles on the Most High, titles that these heathens use for their gods, and start putting them on the Spirit of the Most High, that's where we start to get into trouble. And that's where it becomes very dangerous. Because see, now you're classifying the Holy Spirit as the earthly mother, and you don't even know the origins and the root where the earthly mother came from. Now, again, I told you you can look this stuff up for yourself, and I encourage you to, to, to search it for edification purposes. But, you know, too many of our brothers and sisters want to continue to eat from that unforbidden fruit. And I mean, if that's what you choose to do, you choose to eat from the unforbidden fruit after the Most High has warned you, then that's on you, brothers and sisters. You know, because you're only responsible for your own salvation. The Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But if you really fear Elohim, you will take his word, his words very seriously. So that's all I'm saying. But now I'm going to show you, let's look at some verses because, you know, this could be also uh, what some Hebrews are referring to, to try to say that, the Holy Spirit or the earth is a motherly earth. So maybe maybe they're using this concept. I really don't know. I'm just trying to think of every avenue that some Hebrews would try to use or verses they, they would try to use to call the earthly mother the Holy Spirit because there's nowhere in scriptures where that is backed up. Now, I've seen a few studies on some Hebrews trying to trying their best to explain why the Holy Spirit they say it's called the earthly mother. It made absolutely no sense, no scriptures to back it up, a bunch of assumptions and injections. That's all it was. And I told you in the beginning, there's no such things as an in-between when it comes to the scriptures. Either it's a lie or the truth. And I gave you some history, some historical facts where this stuff comes from. But it's going to be up to you to further study. But I am going to show you a few scriptures where it does mention earth as she. But it has absolutely nothing to do with the, with the earth being called the motherly earth. Or it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit being associated as the earthly mother. None whatsoever. But we're going to look at these verses. There's only like a few of them. I think three or four. But we're going to look at them. And let you see it for yourself. All right, Zion, let's look at a few scriptures here. So let's look at Genesis 4:11, and you can pause the video to better see the scriptures. And it says, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Now, some may try to use this to say, Okay, well, yeah, the earth, the Holy Spirit is the earthly mother, but this has absolutely nothing to do with that. It's not even associated with that not even close it's a, an expression that is a, exp, uh, describing something you know it doesn't mean that 
the earth is the earthly mother it's because it calls the earth her but I guess some Hebrews like to make assumptions because hey it sounds good well since it calls the earth a her it has to be the earthly mother um, therefore I'm gonna call it the earthly mother let's look at number 1630 but if Elohim make a new thing and the earth open her mouth so there it is again uh, the word her with earth what does that have to do with the earth being called or the Holy Spirit being called the earthly mother absolutely nothing whatsoever well, we're gonna look at a few more and give you time to read that let's go down um, 11 6 and what did unto Dathan no I want that one let's, let's go another one because that wasn't talking about I want it so Deuteronomy 32 22 for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on the fire the foundations of the mountains so there it is again let's look at another one and like I said you guys can pause the video and just uh, get this Job 9 6 which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble so like I said there's several verses that associate the earth as her so maybe this is where some Hebrews are getting this concept so they, I guess they figure that hey okay well if the earth is described as her then that means the Holy Spirit is the earthly mother and you see where you can go off track on this without doing proper search line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little and that's why I told you brothers and sisters we're going to be in this word for a while you know we're going to be going through some scriptures because we got to look at everything and we're going to start looking at the Holy Spirit here in a minute we're going to look at the verses that's dealing with that and I can tell you this you know the the Bible does support the masculinity side of the Holy Spirit than anything and that we can prove from the Bible now I personally don't refer to the Holy Spirit as a he or a she I refer to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit or as most Hebrews would say the Ruach HaKadosh and that's what I refer the Holy Spirit as when you start adding pagan names to the spirit of the most high that's where you're going to start getting in trouble saints that's where you're going to go wrong that's when you're going to start going down that dark path and what's so crazy you know you got some people who think they're doing good they think that this is some new found light this is nothing new the heathen's been doing this for thousands of years all right zion so let's go ahead and look up the word comforter and let's see if the scriptures calls the Holy Spirit a she, because that was one of the other questions that you had. Is the Holy Spirit a she? So we're going to look at some verses, and we're going to see what the scripture says. All right, let's go to John 14, 16. And it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he, that he may abide with you forever all right we're not done yet we got some more but notice that last part says that he may abide with you forever and don't worry we're going to look up these words we're going to see what the word holy spirit uh means and it is john 14 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will sin in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you he the scriptures does not support the Holy Spirit being a she John 15 26 but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the Father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father he shall testify of me. He, he shall testify of me. And by the way, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is one and the same. 
I'm going to show that to you in a minute. 16.7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him, him unto you. I will send him unto you. And you can look up the words for these because it's going to support the masculinity of this. And so where people are getting this Holy Spirit, a she, it's coming from these mother goddess deities. It goes all the way back to Nimrod and Kemet. You know, be careful who you give all praises to, brothers and sisters, because you think that you're doing right and you may be actually worshiping an unknown god, a deity. The things that the heathens always worshiped. So let's look at some more. Let's look at the Holy Spirit. And it says, Luke eleven thirteen. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Remember, this is the spirit that leads us into all truth, like we read in um, the last verses. And here's some more. I'm going to skip down to uh, Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You know, when we blaspheme his name, we're grieving the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. This is very important. Now, you ask me the question, is the Holy Spirit the earthly mother? And it's the Holy Spirit called a she. And I told you we we're going to get in depth with this. And I have proven everything from the scriptures. So unfortunately, these false deities have crept into the Israelite awakening by some Hebrews. And we got to cut this stuff out. Just because it sounds good or you want to make a name for yourself or whatever. Why are ever you doing it? Got to cut this out. Now let's look up. Uh, the meaning. Now, I um, went to the Strongs here, and if you look, I have the numbers by spirit, and they're, they're all the same for the one, so that's kind of why I'm scrolling up so you can see. But we're going to um, go and look and see what it's associated with, so that way you can see all the words and everything. So we're going to go here. Let's go down. No, that's not what I want. All right, show Strongs info. And you guys can read that right there. And like I said earlier, it's all one and the same. You know, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. And when you get some spirit time, just look up the word spirit too. So look at all the translations down here. You got Spirit, Holy Ghost, Spirit of Elohim, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit, my Spirit, Spirit of Truth. Because it is the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth. It is the Spirit that quicken it. As it says in John 6.63, you know, human spirit. So, I mean, you're not going to find anywhere in scriptures where the Holy Spirit is associated with being the mo motherly earth or being a she. And I told you it supports more of the masculinity side of the Holy Spirit. All right, Zion. So now from this point here on out, you're going to have to make a choice. Because the ignorance will have to stop along with the blasphemous foolishness. Now turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 17. And let's look at verse 30. In the times of this ignorance, Elohim winked at. Now I want you to listen to this very closely, this next part. It says, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent so once you realize you were doing something wrong and even ignorantly we got to repent from it i've been guilty many times i have to repent of stuff that i didn't know i was doing wrong but i had to repent of it and calling the holy spirit the earthly mother is one of those because when you call upon him like that you are in reality worshiping an unknown god and remember what the Most High says, his first commandment. He says, I am a jealous Elohim. Y'all better remember that. 
the Most High is a jealous Elohim. And we start putting titles on the Most High Spirit like that, you know, we're worshiping other deities. You can't get around it. You can disagree, agree, but you, it's the truth. Zion, I really hope and pray that you're really getting this. I pray that it's sinking in. I really do. Because this thing is serious. Now, let's go back. We started from in the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 and verses 1 through 2. 1 through 2 because I want to show you how the devil tricked Adam and Eve. The same way that many of our Israelite brothers and sisters are being tricked today into these false concepts. Now, let's look at verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle, subtle than any beast of the field which Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, you see this is slickster right here. Because the Most High told him, Every tree that you can eat, you can eat in the garden. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you cannot eat. So the serpent turns around and says, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You know, he's trying to put a little twist in it. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. So yes, that's, that's how slick the devil is, you know. He'll take something, he'll take the truth of the Most High and then twist it and get you to break the Most High's commandments. Get you to break his word get you to accept these false concepts that have been creeping in amongst these Israelites. Uh, that's how he does it. All right, listen on what she goes on to say. Verse 3, it says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Y'all hear that? Touch it. What are we doing even touching these false concepts? The earthly mother is the Holy Spirit. Do not touch that. Stay away from it. The Holy Spirit is a she. Stay away from it. Don't touch it. it says, lest ye die. Verse 4. Now get this. Get this. It says, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Now remember what the Most High told Adam and Eve. You will surely die. You will surely die. So, Satan comes, and comes, comes around and turns it, flips the whole script and says, ye shall not surely die. You know, there's that chance that you won't die. You should not surely die. I'm telling you, the enemy is slick. And he's doing the same thing to the Most High's people this very day. And that's why there's so much confusion amongst Israel right now. And then you know what? It's a good thing that we are scattered, brothers and sisters. And I say that. Yeah, I said it. I said it with boldness because it was meant to be. Because if we all came together right now, it, it would be a hot mess. So the Most High has to keep us scattered until he comes back so that he can set the record straight. Not us, but the Most High. Read that verse 4 again. It says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, but the Most High Elohim says that you, you, you will surely die. You see the twist there? You, you see the compromise and how Satan plays tricks on the Most High's people. You know, and get us caught up in these crazy concepts, these devilish concepts. And it's nothing more than idol worship. That's all it is. Idol worship. And you're breaking the Most High's commandments that's what a commandment is it's the it's the word of the most high now look at the next verse look what the serpent does satan which means deceiver by the way verse five for elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil now look how satan is pumping their heads up He's trying to get them to think that Elohim would be jealous of them. Do we not see this today in our society? 
you look at the entertainment industry and look how these celebrities, and I'm talking about our people who are caught up in this stuff, Jay-Z and them, all these, uh, these really top noticeable entertainers, they worship the devil. They gave their souls, they have sold their souls to the devil because they were told by Satan himself that if they take part of this, they will be as gods. I'm telling you, this thing is deep, brothers and sisters. This thing is no joke. And we shouldn't even be experimenting, not even a taint of this stuff. So when you're talking about the Holy Spirit being the earthly mother, you're dabbling into some very dangerous stuff. And yes, it could get you kicked out of the kingdom. It's that serious. It is that serious. You might as well just go and worship all the heathen's gods. You'll you be better off doing that. At least you would be either hot or cold. But the Most High says you lukewarm, so he has to spit you out of his mouth. Because you want to claim to be an Israelite, but yet you still want to worship deities. You want to put titles on the Most High Spirit and claim to be an Israelite. Claim that you're keeping the laws and have no idea what you're doing. The dangers. So, I, I really pray that this is sinking in really hard like the root of the trees digging into the ground because this is how we this is how we need to understand this stuff we need to be rooted we need to be rooted in this word saints and not just believing in all these crazy man-made concepts and doctrines so you know like i said i had to pray about this one because this was serious, and then after reviewing the questions and your request, you know, the Holy Spirit fell upon me, and I had to go with it. I could not ignore it because it was burning in me to get this out because it needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with. And you can do further studies, you know, and, and the Bible also says avoid all these vain philosophies. Avoid all these vain philosophies, brothers and sisters. There's a lot of it creeping up. In Israel, I'm telling you, there's all kind of stuff creeping up. But just be careful who you associate with. Be careful who you converse with, you know, and be careful who you worship. That's all I'm saying. You got to stay in the word. That's going to be your safest and most uh, solid place. And asking for constant guidance of the Holy Spirit and working out your salvation with fear and trembling. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, so if y'all if y'all's willing, the next lesson that we'll do will be on Genesis 49 because we want to continue on with the blasphemous ABC camps and their European chart. So we got two more lessons to do on that. And so until then, brothers and sisters, I'm going to leave you with Revelation 14:12. Y'all know it already. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of our Hamashiach. So to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, I say shalom and stay strong.